Hi everyone. Like many makers, the uh, idea of making a 10x10 or a 16x16 matrix with RGB LED strips and a whole lot of, you know, crisscross separating pieces, and remember how these go together, is really enticing. The first one I saw was Great Scott put together a, a 10x10 matrix and he had it displaying all sorts of really cool things. And so I jumped on the, the bandwagon a long time ago. These pieces you see cut here were cut, I think, the, the first week after I got my K40 laser cutter. One of the reasons I got my laser cutter was to be able to put together a matrix. And I bought a whole bunch of RGB LEDs and then I realized that these 60 per meter ones I was only going to get like 9 or 10 across 10 by 10 or the K40 was limited to A4. And then I ordered myself some of these, which is, I believe they're 90 per meter. So I could have got the density to 16 because I wanted to do a 16 by 16 matrix. But then I just never got around to actually doing it. Why? Well, there was a couple of reasons. Um, the first one was I designed a whole bunch of stuff to mechanically hold together. These uh, edge pieces were designed to kind of fit together nicely to build a, like a box with these. And then the small pieces fit in and out and it was just fiddly to get together. So this is a, a it was from an off cut, but I was just playing around with different ideas of how I could fit the front into the frame and it would kind of like lock in like this on each side and then the front and back screws would hold all of this together. But putting RGB LEDs behind white acrylic, although that's what pretty much everyone does, whether it's acrylic or some type of white surface, but it doesn't really show the colors well it mutes the colors it kind of gives everything a, a white lighter kind of pastel type tint which i never really liked and so i didn't want to just make another 10 by 10 or 16 by 16 matrix that was the same as everyone else's so i just kind of let it sit i'd moved on and i'd started designing another project and the other project was also using a matrix, but it was not going to be through strips. It was going to be hand placed on a PCB and it was going to be 25 by 7, which is a lot of LEDs. It's 175 LEDs. I've designed the PCB. It's got a ESP32 on it. got some other things on it as well. It's a fully enclosed PCB, but I never manufactured it. I never showcased it to anyone because the thought of hand placing 175 NeoPixels on the board just... Yeah, it drove me nuts. It wasn't something I wanted to do. And, you know, the dream of having a pick and place to do it, well, that just hasn't eventuated yet. So, all this was put aside until now. I made this. For those of you that haven't seen what this is or the, the making video, check out just there. So, I made this with my laser cutter. And basically what I did was I used a technique called scanning on the laser cutter to go back and forwards and scan. You can kind of see there's a bit of a, a depth to it. So rather than cutting straight through the acrylic, it cuts away the top. And obviously the more power I use or the slower I do, the further in it cuts. So this has got about a half a mil going in. And because I did the black spray painting on the clear acrylic, what you get is some really nice see-through, because you can probably maybe see my hand through here transparent but it's also been affected on the front to give it a little bit of opaqueness is that a word i don't know and this came out really well this is obviously edge lit it's designed to be an edge lit type surface but it occurred to me why couldn't i use this type of technique but have it lit from behind have the leds shine through why couldn't i do a matrix pull out the pen and paper because you all love that so much why couldn't i do a matrix of 25, that's four, five, six, seven, 25 by seven LEDs. Why not see if I could use this technique and build this interface where I etch out all the squares instead. So I have a black surface, spray painted surface, and each square that the LED is gonna shine through is being etched out from the laser. So I'm going to try to build this using this new technique and see if it works. But I'm definitely going to use these denser RGB LEDs. So it's going to be pretty big because I need to do 25 across. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Wow, it's going to be quite big. 25 by 7. So it's super wide format. Now it'll 
become clear why as the project goes along. I'm not going to reveal it now. You'll have to wait till the end to see. I'm going to build all the electronics for this just with one of my microcontrollers that I had already designed, my ESP32 development board that has the 5 volt DC barrel jack connector so I can power these because they're going to require a lot of power, a lot of amps. So that's the plan. Let's get cracking. Before I cut the strips up, I need to test this roll. Some of you might remember when I opened this on my mail video that there was some damage to the first third of the strip, which is really disappointing. I managed to get a partial refund from AliExpress. Now you can see that on one of the damage points there's a flashing RGB LED here. The strip really mangled at that point. There's a few places along the strip that's mangled. There's a mangle just here, but doesn't seem to be affecting it too much. Further on there's a couple of caps that have been ripped off and some mangle. So I wanted to test the strip first because the last thing I want to do is cut this into lengths of 25 pixels and then have a problem. And to check them properly I am using a level shifter. So I've got a Pico kit, which is just a Pico D4 board that I'm using. I will be using an ESP32 for this project to make sure that the flickering has nothing to do with the 3 volt, 5 volt power situation. Um, level shifting from 3 volts to 5 volts for my data using just one of these little level shifting modules and as you can see all the pixels are working really well there's no flicking anywhere except for this one pixel that's not behaving itself so my plan is to cut this into strips of 25 and I will pre-check every 25 first before I cut them to make sure that I'm not going to have any dead pixels on there so I'm just going to uh, cut the strip just here Put that aside and use this as the starting point for counting my 25. Probably would help if I blue tack them or something. Okay, I should be able to just touch the ends and check that the strip is fine. So once again it seems to be a problem with the Adafruit library, the very last pixel. Something to do with the RGBW LEDs. This, this could end up being a dead project just because of the quality of these LEDs. Very disappointing. Anyway, I'm going to push on. I'm going to see what end result we come up with. The whole technique might not even work. I don't know. So that's 25 there. So I'm going to cut that strip. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay. That's one strip of 25. Let's now get another strip of 25. I'm a bit worried about these busted ones here. The ones where the uh, caps and stuff were ripped off. I also really don't recommend doing the wiring and testing this way. I just don't want to solder them on when I don't need to. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 19, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25. So again, the end one flickers and that one there is flickering. This could be a code issue. It's quite possible that it's a library issue, maybe. So I'm using the Adafruit library because I can't use Fast LED because Fast LED does still not support RGBW or GRBW LEDs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven bits of strip by 25. Yay! There's an issue with how these are going to be laid out. So here are the seven strips. Obviously there's a, an in and an out point that they all need to connect to. Now, the easiest way to wire them up would be, for instance, if this is the start here, and that was the top, then it would go this way, and then I'd grab my next row, 
which is goes this way so I only had to wire those two and then I get my next row which goes the opposite direction and gets wired here so it's it's basically looping around which is fine the library I'm going to use the Adafruit matrix library supports configuring where your first pixel is and then whether the strip is going continuous in a zigzag or whether it's going progressive which means it goes all the way to the end and back to the next one that's not a problem the problem is the spacing of the pixels now right now the spacing of the pixels between the horizontal is shorter than any direction I do them vertically so for instance if I have them all going the same way just for argument's sake then and I line them up right next to each other or as close as possible the height this way of three pixels is more than the width of three pixels now that's fine I guess because they're at least even and if the display ends up being stretched vertical windows for each pixel or I end up making them square holes but a bigger gap between the vertical sections and the horizontal it's not ideal but it'll still look pretty cool the problem I've got is if I make them alternate directions zigzag which makes it way easier to solder obviously because I don't have to bring wires all the way from here to the next side and all the way down to the next side the problem is my spacing becomes uneven I now end up with rows that are closer and then rows that are further apart and if I put my next row down my next two are close so I end up with bands of two if I solder them this way and that's just not acceptable so it looks like I'm going to have to do them progressively where they all go the same direction and I'm going to have to have long wires that go at the back going from here wrapped around to here behind each one it's not the end of the world I've got plenty of wire but what that will let me do interestingly if I make them all go in a progressive format is I could potentially double these up when I stick them down if I stuck them on top of each other like this I could get them closer together like that so as you can see my spacing now vertically if anything is slightly less than my spacing horizontal I don't know how I'm going to be able to stick them down like this and get them exactly the same width and height I think that's going to be almost impossible because once they're stuck they're stuck but I think this is going to end up better I think I'd rather have a slightly shorter gap in between the horizontal steps than a much larger gap when I space them out this way I think that'll be more visible yeah lots of uh, challenges to this project that you wouldn't think about that's the end of part one folks thank you for watching don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe thank you to all my patrons I will catch you next time bye